Howdy! Welcome to my presentation on my Reflective Inquiry research paper titled Advocating for Undocumented Immigrant Students in the Era of College Readiness. As an educator who has worked primarily at public charter schools that promise that 100% of their students will go to and through college, I couldn't help but wonder if that was also true, true for undocumented immigrant students who face many barriers when pursuing post-secondary education. During the summer, I took the EDCI 710 course that focused primarily on the Hispanic learner in the urban setting. It was in this class that I was able to further investigate my inquiry about undocumented immigrant students and their post-secondary options. I found that they are very limited and due to their legal status, uh, their post-secondary options, that is. Some either make it to college and drop out due to barriers they face, while others never even make it to college end up and end up in blue-collar jobs. The issue I noticed with these outcomes is that students are being led to believe that they can go to college um, and they have been told that because they attend this charter school or this school, it is going to make them college ready and they will go to college, have a good job, and have a better life. And while this is true for um, American U.S. citizens, it is not always true for undocumented immigrant students. Unfortunately, their legal status bars them from many public state universities, um, and they are left only to attend small private universities that are extremely costly. In my paper, I call on educators to, one, reflect on how the intersection between being college ready and an undocumented student presents an issue given the barriers they face, and two, to consider ways to advocate for these students and their post-secondary options. The intended audience for my paper are primarily educators and school administrators who promise to get the students that attend their schools to and through college, or also known as college readiness schools. Um, these schools, in their mission statements, say things like, we are here to serve underserved communities um, and get your students to and through college with our rigorous curriculum um, and our support and resources. I do, upon further investigation, but I, I do believe that all educators can have a seat at this table when it comes to the issue, and this is why. We have an increasing undocumented immigrant student population. Uh, many data show that our uh, undocumented student population is going to grow in the next um, couple of years. Uh, we have also experienced the recent cancellation of deferred action for childhood arrivals, also known as DACA, which is going to um, leave many undocumented students with even more limited options. Um, and so our numbers will not only grow because more immigrant students are coming to the U.S., but also because less students will be covered by DACA. In order to keep my paper focused and organized, um, I sectioned my paper into four uh, main sections. Those sections include data on undocumented immigrant students and how um, this plays how this plays into my paper or my topic. Sorry. Um, I also talk about the barriers that undocumented immigrant students face when seeking post-secondary higher education. The second. The, the next point I make is the connection between reflective inquiry for social justice and education and my topic. Um, I believe that it's important to point this out um, because I think if I don't explicitly say it, some, some might not understand how reflective inquiry uh, plays a role into to my argument. Um, and finally, I um, cover ways to advocate for undocumented immigrant students. 
So in the following slides, I will delve deeper into how each section relates back to my argument um, that as, as educators and as school administrators who are promoting college readiness on our walls and in our mission statements, we need to consider our undocumented students um, and how we can support them um, because they are important too. So in, in order to better understand the importance of my topic, um, I wanted to look at what the data says about undocumented immigrant students. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about how many, what percentage live uh, below the poverty level, um, what percentage lives above the poverty level, um, and approximately how many students actually attain a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, I think it's important to look at these data because um, we'll find two trends, and that is that undocumented immigrant students mostly live in underserved communities, which is where a lot of these um, college-ready schools are starting to uh, to find their their foundations. Um, so I think it's important to to establish what percentage um, that undocumented immigrant students live in these underserved areas. Um, so according to the Migration Policy Institute, in Texas, about 31% of immigrant students live 100% below the poverty level, which is up by 16% when compared to their U.S. citizen-born neighbors. Additionally, only 41% live above the poverty level, whereas 67% of their native born peers live above that very same poverty level. As of 2014, about 987,000 immigrant students in Texas, uh, of, of the, of the 987,000, only 23% attained a bachelor's degree or higher. Um, and as I said before, when looking at these data, I see that many undocumented immigrant students live in these underserved and often impoverished communities uh, where these college-ready schools are, are functioning. And I also see um, that perhaps because of a lack of resources and support, um, a very, very low percentage of immigrant students actually um, attain a bachelor's degree. So according to the literature, some of the barriers that undocumented immigrant students face include liminal citizenship. Um, they are also banned from applying from FAFSA. And they also experience a lack of support and resources from school administration and teachers. The literature paints this idea of liminal citizenship as accepting and indoctrinating undocumented immigrant students as U.S. citizens. In schools, we motivate them and applaud their academic efforts and encourage them to go to college and to be upstanding citizens of the United States. However, the liminal citizenship aspect comes into play when they realize that the only universities that are likely to accept them due to their legal status or private costly ones that they may not be able to afford or their families. Throughout the U.S., and this is, I believe, a very uh, a little known fact, um, that throughout the U.S., undocumented immigrant students are banned from applying for FAFSA, which is a financial aid resource available um, to all U.S. citizens. This ban makes the financial burden of college too great to bear for undocumented students and oftentimes causes them to give up their dream. Um, and finally, the, the literature points to the need for more overt resources and support for undocumented students. Um, oftentimes students must lean on each other as a network to get to college rather than the school counselors or the school college centers. Um, and so it's really it's really unfair that these students are kind of sidelined uh, when it comes to, to resources available for them in, in pursuing higher education.
So I want to talk a little bit about how critical reflective inquiry for social justice plays a role into my paper. Um, I've been talking a lot about how undocumented immigrant students live in underserved areas, um, and a lot of schools that claim to be college readiness schools um, are, are in these communities or have found their way in these communities. Um, and so I think that oftentimes, and it, this is really drawing from personal experience, um, many many school administrators and, and even counselors and and even educators um, in these these college readiness schools um, have this idea of oh I'm doing such a great thing for this underserved community and um, all I have to do is go to work every day and um, you know just keep encouraging and pushing these kids without um, actually thinking about and perhaps even considering their privilege and how um, their U.S. citizenship granted them um, the the access to to go to college and to pursue degrees to be teachers or school administrators and things like this. Um, so I think that that although reflective inquiry is intended to be a tool for teachers to perfect their craft, um, I have chosen to use reflective inquiry for social justice as a call to school administrators and educators to consider the circumstances our undocumented immigrant students are in and how we can support them in the age of college readiness. Uh, Nona Lyons, explains that a large part of reflective inquiry for teachers is recognizing the politics and the inequalities that exist in education and how we play a role in either promoting those inequalities or helping to tear them down. Um, when we look back at the, at the barriers that undocumented immigrant students face, we find that they are either politically motivated or fall on the shoulders of school admin and or teachers. Um, and I think oftentimes we need to take a step back and we need to reflect on, am I actually um, being a resource? Am I going and being knowledgeable? Am I finding uh, programs that support these undocumented immigrant students? Because it's simply not enough to encourage them to go to college. We also have to be there to support them um, in applying, finding financial aid, um, and really breaking down these political barriers um, that ban them from pursuing higher ed. Um, in my paper, I make the argument that if we claim to be schools that prepare our students to be college ready, we must also deliver that same support um, to our undocumented students by advocating for them. Um, and in my next slide, I go into <clears throat> into ways that that we at, we sh we can be advocating uh, for undocumented students and and their higher ed opportunities. So woven in the literature on ways to advocate for undocumented uh, immigrant students are several themes that I found. Um, and these themes include being knowledgeable on your state's laws concerning undocumented students in higher ed. Um, it's important to seek resources from institutions of higher education. Um, and it's important to educate other educators about the issue. Um, more than just being knowledgeable, about the laws pertaining to undocumented students and higher ed, I think it's also important to stay up to date on legislation that may, that may be in the works for these students. Um, I know that before DACA came into play, um, the DREAM Act had been tossed around um, and it was never approved, but I think it's important to support um, legislation that support these students in their dream to go to college. Um, I also want to want to point out, um, I want to go back to the being knowledgeable point. Um, so laws, I found that laws, uh, state laws differ um, in, in who they accept to college and who, who they don't. Um, some state universities um, do open their doors to undocumented immigrant students, um, but these, un these undocumented students must pay um, the out-of-state tuition. Um, which, again, presents a financial barrier to these students. Um, each law, each state is different in, in how they, um, 
and who they, I guess, accept to college. Um, and so, and if, in a, in any given state, if, if, they do not accept undocumented students into their public universities. Uh, a lot of private universities will accept these students, but again, private, small private universities are extremely costly. And and while an, an undocumented student may be able to make it through a year or even a semester at these private universities, um, they the statistics show that they end up dropping out uh, due to the financial burden. Um, I also want to point out to um, when I said educate other educators, um, I think that one way to give these students voice is to educate other educators about this. As I said before, um, not keeping you know what you know about undocumented immigrant students to yourself, but um, really letting your colleagues know about their struggles that they face and, and really calling on them to reflect on how on ways that they can help these students um, that they encounter in their their classrooms. I also want to say that the best way to be a resource for these students is to be knowledgeable in all aspects that concern undocumented students and this is especially true for those who work with high populations of undocumented students. Many universities across the country offer programs and resources that support undocumented students. Um, I did a quick Google search um, and found that UC Berkeley has a great program for undocumented students that really gives them a voice and a platform to share their struggles um, as well as a community that advocates for them. Um, so it's really a community for them to to really lean on as they as they go through college. Um, so I I want to conclude this slide with saying that really we need to just be a support for our students and be um, overt with it. Um, we shouldn't hide. Um, and and even though I know that um, maybe an undocumented immigrant student coming to you might be a little daunting. Um, but when you have the knowledge and the resources um, to help them, I think that that the task at helping them will be will be a little more light. So um, I just want to conclude and, and bring it all together. Um, in my paper, I discuss the relevance and timeliness of my topic as we move into an era of college readiness um, and an increase in the number of undocumented students um, that we will face in the coming years. Um, and again, that number is going to increase with the cancellation of DACA. Um, I call on educators and school admin to reflect and consider the barriers that undocumented students are facing when confronted with the reality that they may not make it to college. Um, and really, I guess there are two aspects of reflection that I'm calling on educators to, to really think about, and that's one, to recognize um, their privilege as a U.S. citizen if, if they are one, um, and how that helped get them to college. Um, and then two, consider the barriers and the the, how hard it is for undocumented students to get to and even through college um, because it's it's more than just getting them to college it's getting them um, to a degree um, so finally my topic addresses a gap in the literature concerning undocumented students in higher ed in that it calls on educators and school administrators um, to reflect on the US circumstances especially um, that, that undocumented students face um, when promoting college readiness in our mission statements and our school hallways. There are further implications, or sorry, there are implications for future research in my paper. Um, when, when I was bringing this all together, um, I thought a lot about um, how I would like to expand on this paper and include um, and really just make it a study um, instead of a reflective uh, inquiry paper. Um, and I, I really think and I would like to expand upon it by collecting data on undoc undocumented students who, uh, who specifically attend these charter schools that promise to get their students to and through college. Um, I would really love to, to delve 
deeper into the data of how many actually make it to college and how many make it through. Um, do these charters end up dropping undocumented students who they know might not make it to college due to their legal status? Um, or do they find ways to help these students? Um, I am particularly interested in charters located primarily in these underserved areas that I'm talking about. Um, and so I really want to, to delve into their data and, and how their students feel, their undocumented students feel about the school's programs because this their model, if they're if they are truly helping students get to and through college, um, can can give other public schools a helping hand perhaps in in working through this issue. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Um, thank you. Goodbye.